And we are live. Okay, so I'm Doug. I'm teaching fractions. This week we are going to do some reducing, some multiplying with cancelling, some dividing, and some word problems. And I look at my heading fractions and I realize it looks kind of crooked, but it's because it really is crooked, so I think that's going to have to be fine. Um, What's up? Not much new. Uh, the weather is just normal. Mocha's not here. She's upstairs. And I will tell you one thing about Mocha, which is that she has one uh, white mitten in one of her paws. I have never, I don't think I've ever shown that to the students in the videos, but it's pertinent because I have a word problem that involves paws. Anyway, um, this is the Aston Villa shirt. They are a club team from Birmingham in England. And there's nothing much more to say about that. I want to get into the math. So I'm going to start with some reducing of fractions. And I know I, I did a little bit of this uh, last time, but I just touched on it. And we need to go into a little bit more detail and have a bit of practice with it. So I'm going to start with the fraction 3 over 21. And I'm going to remind you that we can break these down, these numbers, into multiplications that would give those numbers as answers. So for instance, three, we can get pretty much in only one way, one times three, although of course we could write three times one instead. 21, well, there's one times 21, there's 21 times one, and the only other ones are, hey, seven and three. We can multiply seven by three or three by seven. And that means we can cancel. We could cancel three on the top and on the bottom, and that means that this fraction is equal to one seventh. Well, that's cool. It's kind of the same thing that we were already talking about last time, but we're showing it by showing these multiplications. And it's a way of doing it. It's a way of thinking your way through this so that you understand. But is there another way to show this? The way I usually show it is I write three over 21 and I divide by a clever form of one. In this case, I'm dividing by three over three. Three divided by three equals one, and 21 divided by three equals seven. I get the same answer. I'm really doing the same thing. I'm just showing it as a division of a clever form of one here, and I'm showing it as multiplications with a bit of canceling there. Canceling is one of the funnest things there is to do with fractions. It's uh, it's, it's another good idea for one of those puzzle books that you buy in the airport or in the train station when you're going to be sitting still for a long time. And instead of choosing things like crossword puzzles, you choose math puzzles. There should be puzzle books like this. So having lots, all sorts of fractions and you have to reduce them, that would be a perfectly good puzzle book. Or multiplication problems where you do canceling. It's fun. So it's the same sort of thing as doing a crossword puzzle to me. I'm going to do another example, and I'm going to show it the same way. Where's my eraser cloth? There we go. Nice clean one. So let's get a nice clean wall for the rest of today's lesson. Oh yeah, that works good. Oh yeah. Okay, I will stop and take a little sip of my fizzy water. And that means, of course, the students take advantage of the times when the teacher is erasing and writing up new problems to take a sip of their own water if they need one. Okay, how about numerator 8, denominator 32? We can reduce this in more than one way, but using the same strategy, we realize that 8 is equal to 1 times 8, and 32 is equal to 4 times 8. And we managed to achieve the same thing. We broke it down. We broke both numbers down into pair, their pairs of factors, trying to get the same number to happen. And the 8 over 8 thing happened, so we can cancel. And therefore, 1 quarter is an equivalent fraction to 8.30 seconds, and is therefore the same number, really. But this is an easier version of the number to look at and to say, because having to say 8.30 seconds, Okay, and of course we can show it the other way. We can show it as 8 over 32 
divided by a clever form of 1, which will be 8 over 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 32 divided by 8 is 4. Two different ways of doing the same thing. Multiplication with cancelling or division. So it makes us think, okay, I guess sometimes division and cancelling are really kind of the same, the same thing. I think so. What else can we do here? When we decide that we used 8, was it the only thing that we could have chosen? Was 8 the only number we could have chosen? No, we had some other choices. I'm going to remind us of something. Let's see, how much space do I have? Over here, I'm going to remind us of the factors of 8. And one of the ways of showing the factors of a number is you write down the number and you do Doug's layers of the onion approach. One is always a factor of every other number. The number itself has to be one of its own factors. And then you, after one, you try two. It's working because eight is even. And we get, two, we get eight by multiplying two by four. And then three is not a factor of eight. It doesn't work, so I'm finished. And even though I have more space than I needed, I have listed the factors of eight. If I do the same thing with 32, I might run out of space, so I'll write smaller or skinnier at least. 1 and 32, let's see where this is fitting, where's that 8? Okay, I can fit the 32 a little further. And then 2 will work because 32 is even. And we get 32 by multiplying 2 by 16. 3 won't work, 4 will work, and we get 32 by multiplying 4 by 8. And 5 and 6 and 7 won't work, we're finished. We have listed the factors, did, oh, I missed one. Wait, where did I, wait, one, two, four. No, I, no, I got them all. Okay, so we've listed the factors of eight and the list of the factors of 32. And then we look for the biggest number that's on both lists, which was eight. And that's why I wanted to choose eight to do this. But what if I had tried four, because four is on both lists. What if I had tried two, because two is on both lists. So we have choices when we're simplifying fractions like this. I'm going to erase this one, and I'm going to try to do it this way, but I'm going to use four instead of eight and see what happens. Just to think about what we're doing and to understand it better. So eight over 32 is equal to, I want four to happen. So 8 is what you get when you multiply 2 by 4, and, th and 32 is what you get when you multiply 8 by 4, and these cancel. It's working, except we ended up with two eighths. So that means we can keep going. And therefore we can put 1 times 2, and we can put 4 times 2, and now the 2's cancel. Is this going to fit? Yes it is. My chalk's getting kind of small though. So I have one quarter, which is the same answer. So I did it in two stages by choosing a number that was on both lists, but not choosing the greatest number that was on both lists. And I got the same answer in the end as I did when I did it in one stage by choosing the greatest number that's on both lists. I'm just analyzing what I'm doing and why it works and how it works. I'm realizing that this is longer, but it still worked. And I didn't even choose the smallest number that was on both lists. Forget about one, we're never going to choose one because when you use a one, when you use ones, you end up with just the same thing and it goes on and on. But I could have choos chosen four as I've shown here, but I could also have chosen two. I have room down here, I'm going to do it. Of course, it's going to be longer. Notice how this one's longer than that one. So I'll move over to the left a bit and I'll put my 32, eight over 32, that's an eight. It's not the best eight I've driven, ever drawn. And what if I want to use 2? So 8 is what you get when you multiply 4 by 2, and 32 is what you get when you multiply 16 by 2. These cancel, so I get 4 sixteenths. And now I can do another step, and I again have two choices. Because I can choose 4, but I can also choose 2 again. Huh. So if I choose 4, it'll be two steps like this one. And this is just fun. But I'm going, to, I'm going to try two. Okay, equals two times two over eight times two. Yeah, that works. Four is two times two, 16 is eight times two. The two is canceled again. I'm really going to run out of chalk. This is using a lot of chalk. Okay, so I have two eighths. Okay, it's the same as this one. 
I'm going to break that into 1 times 2 over 4 times 2. The 2's cancel a third time, and I have 1 quarter. Okay, that was long. It wasn't the most efficient way of doing it, but it still worked. So we have choices, and the choices that we're making are the choice of which of these numbers do we want to use. Whether we're doing this multiplying cancelling approach or the other dividing by a clever form of one approach, both of them require us to choose a number that's going to work. And the best number was 8 because I was able to do it the most quick and efficient way with 8. But 4s and 2s also work because when you're familiar with the factors of certain numbers and you realize 8 and 32 kind of have a lot in common, they have 8s and 4s and 2s and 1s as common factors. So this common factor thing, very useful. That was fun. A lot of detail about one question, really. And I'm not even showing any of the clever form of one versions of this answer. I have to tell you, I prefer the clever form of one. I find it makes things happen faster. So I'll do a lot of that. Let's do another one, though. Now, when we make up a question like this, we can make up questions with simple numbers in them where the question goes really quickly, but we can also make up questions with numbers that give us an awful lot of choices, and that means choosing bigger numbers. So should we be afraid, should we be afraid of doing this when the numbers get larger? No, that's my answer. 24 over 36. Okay, so the number's getting a little bigger. And if I want to use the clever form of one approach, I'm going to divide by one. I guess I should show that. I'm going to show it to remind you that we do that. It's the way I was showing it last time I did my last lesson. So 24 over 36 divided by 1 can be written as 24 over 36 divided by what? We can choose numbers that we know are factors of both. We can list all the factors like I did before, but we can also start doing this in our head. And I encourage you to try to do it in your head. If you can't think of the, the numbers to use, you don't panic because you can take the strategy, hey, 24 and 36 are both even. 2 will work. 2 over 2 will work. And you're not wrong, you just end up doing more, more steps. But do you always have to list all of the factors? Well, I think what happens is students get better and better at doing this without having to list all of the factors because they, they're developing number sets. They're developing familiarity with these numbers, even larger numbers like 24 and 36. You get a familiarity with them because you'll see a lot of 24s and 36s in your math problems as you go through your math education. And so you start becoming more and more familiar with numbers like 24 and 36, the way younger students get more and more familiar with numbers like 4 and 8, learning that they're both even, that 4 is a factor of 8. This is familiarity. Well, 24 and 36, we'll start developing familiarity with bigger numbers like this if we allow ourselves the chance to do it. What numbers would be on both lists? I'm tempted to say 8, but 8 won't work. 8 is a factor of 24, but not of 36. 9 is a factor of 36, and that makes me think of 4. Yeah, 4 is going to work, but is it the greatest common factor of these two numbers? No, 6 is a factor of 24 and 36. We can use 6 over 6, but what about 12? Yeah, 12 over 12 is going to work, and it's going to be the most efficient number to use because... 12 happens to be the greatest common factor of 24 and 36. And I was able to figure that out without having to list all of the factors. So you don't have to list all the factors. It's a good thing to do when you're not sure. But when you start feeling sure, you don't need to do it. You won't do it as often. And 24 divided by 12 is 2. And 36 divided by 12 is 3. 2 thirds, which cannot be reduced further, is the simplest version of this number. And I got there without having to use too much chalk or pencil lead. And I used, I used my brain quite a bit. But did I do that thing that teachers don't want to see students do, where they just pump down answers without explaining how they get, got them? No. I showed what I did. So I have shown my work, as we say. And I'm quite proud of this. I think students should feel proud when they're able to do this.
Okay, reducing a fraction. I'm going to do another one, but it's with pizza. You know I love pizza. Okay, just, I won't draw too many pizzas this week, but I feel like drawing pizzas for one of these problems. So, how about 12 over 16? I chose this example carefully because dividing pizzas into large numbers of slices becomes inconvenient and some of them are harder than others. Dividing a pizza into five equal pieces is hard when you're drawing. 16 is a much bigger number than five, but it's actually easier to do. Well, let's prove it, let's do it. So I'm going to draw a pizza. I'm going to cut it in half. Now I'm going to cut it the halves in half. So I've cut it into four equal pieces. And then I'm going to cut each of these in half. So now there's eight equal pieces. And we can see why this is working and why it's easy. Because cutting it in half and then cutting the halves in half, it keeps on being half and half. And that's easy to draw. Whereas cutting it into thirds and fifths can be a bit of a, a struggle sometimes to make the slices fair. Okay, so I haven't finished. That's eight equal slices. I need to divide all of them in half to get 16. And I'm going to do that carefully because if it were a real pizza, I would want all of the slices to be fair for all of the people who are eating the pizza. I have 16 slices. And I'm going to show 12 sixteenths, which means I'm going to shade in 12 of the slices. And instead of that sprinkling around thing, I'm going to try to do them all sort of together because it's more efficient and it, it's better for illustrating what we're doing right now. So I'm shading in all the slices on this side of the pizza. But I'm not finished. I've got eight. I don't have 12 yet. I'd have to do four more. And I need more chalk. So, getting another slice of chalk. Four more. I think I'll do these ones. Twelve sixteenths of a pizza. Now, if I want to reduce this fraction, I didn't really leave room, so I'll do it over here. I'm going to divide by clever form of 1. And the greatest common factor of 12 and 16 is 4. And I did that in my head. Because it's fine to do it in your head. If you're not sure, list out the factors. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 3 quarters. 12 sixteenths of the pizza is the same thing as 3 quarters of the pizza. And I used the space I wanted to draw a second pizza, so I'm just going to have to draw it a little lower down on the wall. And I'm going to divide it into four equal slices because I'm now showing a pizza that represents three quarters. The denominator is four. So dividing it into four, and I have to shade three of them. And I'm choosing to do it in the same way so that we can see. Twelve sixteenths of a pizza equals three quarters of a pizza. You can tell by the shape, by the, <coughs> the amount of shaded versus the amount of unshaded. Hmm. So this thing about reducing fractions, that also works with pizza. It's amazing how many fraction math operations work with pizzas. But I'm not going to draw, I may not draw any more pizzas today. How am I doing for time? I'm doing pretty well for time. I will tell you a, a little story. Little Doug, when I was quite young, I would not eat cheese. And my mother was worried because she thought cheese is healthy, it's good for you, Doug should eat cheese. How do I get him to eat cheese? But I didn't like cheese. And one day they ordered pizza, my parents ordered pizza, and I didn't know pizza had cheese on it. So they didn't tell me and they gave me a slice of pizza and they said, they were saying, and it wasn't just my parents, my older brother and my older sister were all kind of watching me and they were saying, do you like it? Like that, you know, do you like it? And I said, yeah, yeah, this is good. And I ate it and I liked it. Probably because mozzarella is the cheese that's on pizza and it's not a very strong tasting cheese. So I liked it. I didn't realize it was cheese. So we had pizza quite often because my mother wanted me to eat cheese. And I wasn't complaining because I liked it. Why didn't my older brother and older sister tell me, you know, mozzarella is cheese, eh? They didn't say that. Because they also like pizza. 
and they realize, okay, if we make sure this kid doesn't realize there's cheese on pizza, we get to eat pizza more often. And I guess the last thing that I have to say in this story is that it wasn't too long before I realized, after all, that mozzarella was cheese, but I also kept it a secret. I didn't tell anyone that I realized there was cheese on pizza because I thought, if I tell them that I know it's cheese, they'll stop ordering pizza all the time. <laughs> so everyone was keeping it a secret for quite a long time when there was no secret anymore. The kid who it was a secret from knew. That is my one of my many stories about pizza because I have far too many stories about pizza. Now I'm going to get into some multiplying of fractions with cancelling. Cancelling, while well, multiplying fractions might be the most fun thing of all the math things I've ever learned in my life. I love cancelling. So yes, he's erasing and he's drawing new problems on the chalkboard. So if you need a, uh, a stretch or to do a little bit of exercise or a sip of your water. Then that is a good time to do it. Okay, so how about hmm, four elevenths? Does that show well? Times... 1 12th. So this is a multiplying fractions problem, and we did a bunch of multiplying fractions last time. But now I want to do it with cancelling. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to cancel a 4. And with fractions, it's not like reduce, with multiplying, sorry, with, it's not like reducing where you only have one fraction. We have two fractions. But we can still do this cancelling thing, like we were doing when we were uh, dividing by a, a clever form of one or multiplying with cancelling like I was doing in the previous examples. But the thing about when you're multiplying is you can't just do cancelling inside this fraction and inside this fraction. You can do it across the fractions but it has to be a top with a bottom. So this 4 is on the top and that 12 is on the bottom and 4 and 12 have a common factor. I can't, 4 and 11 don't have a common factor. 1 isn't going to work with cancelling. It's already as small as it can get. Um, but 4 and 12 have a common factor, so it's really the only opportunity. So I'm going to cancel a 4. I'm going to divide this 4 by 4, and that leaves me 1, but I have to divide this 12 by 4, and that leaves me 3. And now I can do my multiplication. 1 times 1 is 1. 11 times 3 is 33. I have my answer. It cannot be reduced. It cannot be simplified further. 130, 133rd is as simplified as this can get. Now, what if I hadn't done the cancelling? Of course it still works. So we have 4 over 11 times 1 over 12, and we can just go ahead and do the multiplication. 4 times 1 is 4, and 11 times 12 is 132. They are rather large numbers, and this is a rather large answer, but these numbers do fit within the 12 times 12 multiplication table, so it's still fair. Can I reduce this? Yes. But I realize 2 is not going to be the greatest common factor. 4 is. How do I know this with such a large number? It's not so obvious because 4 times some big number to get 132 is not really part of the 12 by 12 multiplication tables. But 4 is a factor of 100 because 4 times 25 is 100. And 4 is a factor of 32 because 4 times 8 is 32. So I'm able to get this feeling that I can reduce this. So I'll divide by a clever form of 1, which will be 4 over 4, and I'll get 1 over, it's going to be 33. I'll make this bigger so that I can fit that. It's a little messy. Okay, 4 times 33. 4 times 30 is 120, and 4 times 3 is 12, and 120 plus 12 is 132. I feel confident that I did this correctly. Interesting moment for me, where I realized with some questions... Cancelling makes it easier. This was faster. It was faster for me to think through, and it was faster to do the steps. Why? Because while 132 is not inconvenient when you're multiplying 11 by 12, because we memorized that, 132 and dividing it by 4 isn't quite so convenient. 
This was fast and easy, and this one it had, I stumbled a little bit. So there are times when cancelling is really going to be helpful, and this is one of those times. What was my next, next example? Okay, I'm showing this in more than one way. I need my eraser cloth. How about we try, I'm just making sure I'm doing okay for time. How about 12 over 20 multiplied by five halves. I should be writing larger because I have room for most of these problems. Now, if we don't do canceling, we can answer this. It's not that bad. The numbers are a little larger. larger. 12 times five is 60. And 20 times 2 is 40. And we can reduce this without too much trouble. The easiest clever form of 1, if we're using that strategy, is going to be 20 over 20. Making sure it'll fit. 60 divided by 20 is 3. And uh, 40 divided by 20 is 2. 3 halves is my answer. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, but that's okay. Why did that happen? Because 12 times 5 is bigger than 20 times 2. No problem. Okay, so that's a way of doing that. But it's not the only way of doing it. How about... Rewriting this with factors multiplied by each other. Remember when we were doing 1 times? Well, it's not only 1s that we'll do. So I can write 12... Well, if I really think about it, I can do what would be the bottom of a factor tree for 12. And I can express 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. So I'm listing all of its prime factors. That's 12. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. It's really not that hard to do. It's really not that weird. 20 is 4 times 5. So that's 2 times 2 times 5. Again, I'm doing the bottom level of the factor tree for 20, quick, quickly. And then 5 and 2, we can't, we can't uh, break those down into any other factors because their only factors are 1 in themselves. So I'll just write times 5 over 2. And now I can start cancelling. And this, it's, this is fun. This 2 cancels with this 2. This 5 cancels with this 5. Remember, you can cancel across two different fractions so long as it's one top and one bottom. And I can cancel this two with either this one or that one. So I can uh, be adventurous and say, I'm canceling this two with that one. But I should show what's left. The three is left here, the two is left there, that's obvious, but I should show that my five and my two, can, after having been canceled, they don't leave zero left, they leave one. So I have three times one in my numerators, and I have two times one in my denominators, and I have the same answer. So that's another way of showing it. When you get these com more complicated questions where the numbers are a little larger, you can list all the prime factors when you're doing your canceling. It's not the only way to do it. It's not the fastest way to do it, but you can do it. And that's fun because it gives lots of canceling, lots of this, oh, I dropped my chalk, lots of this crossing out stuff, which is really part of the fun part of canceling when you get to cross out a bunch of things. Okay, let's do... So, oh, I also want to compare. We can just multiply and then reduce our answer. Or we can do the canceling thing, which reduces our question, and then we multiply. So if we multiply and then reduce, we have two steps. But if we do the canceling and then multiply, well, again, we have two steps. So it's really, one of them is not really faster than the other. This one uses more chalk, though. Okay, let's do some even bigger numbers just to prove how powerful this is. Because students who are not afraid to multiply fractions with small numerators and small denominators might start being intimidated when they get to fractions with big numbers in the numerators and the denominators. But this cancelling thing can really help us to not feel intimidated. How about 24 over 36 times 12 over 28? 
big numbers. This is going to be way easier with cancelling. If I want to multiply these directly, some people are going to want to pull out a calculator to do this. I often would use a calculator, but I can also be a show off and do it without a calculator. I'm just going to go way over to the side there to show what the answer would be if I did this without cancelling, because I'm not really encouraging students to do this without cancelling. It's going to give us 200 and, I have to make sure it'll fit, 288, is that fitting? Yes, as the numerator, and 1008 as the denominator. Whew. So that's a lot of multiplying of big numbers to do. And then, of course, reducing that afterwards is going to be a chore. But what if I do it with cancelling? What is it going to look like? There's more than one way to do it. We know that. I can list the prime factors. This is the last time I think that I'm going to list the prime factors. 24 is 2 times 2, that's 4, times 2, that's 8, times 3. I have to make sure I leave enough room to show all this. I'll just put this in a big bracket because I'm not really going there right now. Times, the I'll show the line for the, the bar for the other fraction. 12 isn't going to take as much space. That's 2 times 2 times 3. That's good because I was running out of space. 36, what was 36? Yes, okay, yeah. 36 is 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. And the bottom line on factor three, you can give the numbers in any order. I could have done three times three times two times two. I'm thinking two times three is six, and two times three is six, and six times six is 36, but there's other ways of doing it. Three times three is nine, and two times two is four, and nine times four is 36. It's fun. This is just fun. Factor trees are almost as much fun as canceling. And then the 28, that's seven times four. Most people will think of that right away, but four can be broken into two times two. So I'm putting two times two times seven. And now I'm going to do some cancelling. I have a lot of cancelling I can do. 2 cancels with 2. 2 cancels with 2. 3 cancels with 3. 2 cancels with 2. 2 cancels with 2. Is there anything else I can cancel? Yes, 3 cancels with 3. This is fun. All that's left is this 2. And over here all we would have left is a 1 because everything cancelled. So that leaves me a 2. Remember, when everything cancels, it doesn't mean it's a 0. It means it's a 1. And this, all everything cancelled here, all that's left over there is a 7. So that means if I did the reducing thing with this giant, horrible fraction, I should end up with 2 sevenths. Will I? Let me try it. 288 over 1008. When they're too big, you might take look. I'm just going to go, they're both even, I'm going to divide by a clever form of 1, that's 2's. So that's 144 over 504. Still really big, but not as bad as this. And they're both even. Divide by 2 over 2. That's 72 over 252. Still big. Divide by 2 over 2. That's 36 over 126. Hmm. It's certainly not the most efficient way. It'll work. I can keep going all the way to the end. They're still even. Divide by 2 over 2, and I have 18 over 63. And now it's becoming obvious, well, 2 over 2 won't work, because 63 is not even. So it's becoming obvious I need to use a 9 here. Huh. But I didn't really leave enough room. So divide by 9 over 9 equals 2 over 7. Well, we knew it was going to be 2 over 7 because we already did it the more, more efficient cancelling way. Is it the fastest way of showing this? No, because the listing of the prime factors isn't the most efficient way of doing this. So I'm going to erase this huge one. And I'm going to do it in a more efficient way. The way I think it's probably the best way for students we know it's going to be 2 7, so I'm going to erase that. The best way for students to do it, in my opinion, when you have these great big numbers, is, let's see, 24 over 36, ooh, that's a really messy 3, times 12 over 28. This is what I usually do. I'm going to erase that 3 because it looks too much like a 5. There. Still messy, but it's a 3. Okay, 
I think the best way is to cancel, but without listing all the prime factors, just start canceling things you know that'll work. You know things that you know will work, but you're not going to just keep looking for twos. We saw how long it takes when we reduce the giant fraction when we're just trying to get twos all the time. So we look for bigger things, and I see, well, 12 and 36, they have a common factor of 12. 24 and 36 also have a common factor of 12. I still have choices. I'm going to divide the 12 and the 36 by 12, which is going to leave a 1 and a 3. Okay, things got a lot smaller very quickly. 24 and 28, I'm going to take out a 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. 6 and 3. That means I could have taken out more somewhere, but I'm just going to do it now. 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3. If I divide them both by 3, I get a 2 and a 1. Finally, 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 7 is 7. No one's surprised to see that happen. That was fun. How are we doing now? I'm liking how we're doing now, the amount of time. That was, that's a big question. Big numbers, big question, takes more time. Are we afraid? To me, the whole point is, I'm hoping the students are not afraid. I hope the students look at this and realize, I am not afraid of this sort of question. Not anymore, maybe once upon a time, not now. Okay, so I'm moving on to my third page, and I'm going to do a couple of word problems. Now, these word problems will be multiplication of fractions problems, and I only have two because I want to save some time for dividing fractions afterwards. I know that I talked a little bit last time about the word of, and although I didn't do word problems last time, I did talk about the way that the word of often means multiply in math. Now this is going to take a bit of space to write, so I'm going to go way over to the left here. Seven eighths of my students want pizza on Friday. I'm not going to draw pizza. Period. There's a sentence. Okay, we're getting there. Two thirds of my students are vegetarian. Now we just need the question. What fraction of my students I'm taking a look to see how this looks. I still have all this space of chalkboard over there. I have to arrange my camera different. What fraction of my students should get veggie pizza on Friday? I'll put it here, veggie Now you see why I only want to do two word problems. On Friday, question mark, and now we get to the fun part. This is not the fun part. The fun part is answering the question. Okay, so what are we doing? We need seven-eighths of two-thirds, or we need two-thirds of seven-eighths. Hmm. That's a little weird that we could say it either way, but remember with multiplication, 3 times 4 equals 4 times 3, so I'm not actually surprised that I could phrase this two different ways. But I knew about the 7 eighths wanting pizza first. And then I applied the two thirds of the students being vegetarian. So I think the more graceful way is to say two thirds of 7 eighths. But we're not using the word of and then in, in, in an expression. We're going to use the multiplication symbol. This is one of those times when of means multiply. If I multiply two-thirds by seven-eighths, I should get the answer to this question. And then we'll think about it and see if it makes sense. So how am I going to do this? Am I going to cancel? Of course I can cancel, but I can do it without canceling. So I'm going to cancel. The only things I can see to cancel are I can cancel a two from this 2 and this 8, leaving a 1 and a 4. Then I multiply 1 times 7 is 7, 
and 3 times 4 is 12. That means 7 twelfths of my students should get veggie pizza on Friday. Okay, next word problem. This eraser cloth isn't very clean anymore. Quickly take a sip of the fizzy water. Okay. These are long to write, that's the problem. Three quarters of the Labrador puppies, I'll just write lab puppies. So that could be Labrador puppies or puppies that are in a lab for some reason. Three quarters of the lab, of lab, of the lab puppies are brown. Four-fifths of them have white socks. Four-fifths have white socks. That's why I was mentioning that Mocha has white socks. Well, she has one white sock and the other one is a little bit. Four-fifths have white socks. It's cute though. What fraction of the brown lab puppies have white socks? What fraction? of the brown lab puppies. All right, pups. Have white socks. It's another word problem. It's another multiplication of fractions. We have this of thing happening again. We're doing the same thing. We want to know what four-fifths of three-quarters. Three-quarters of them are brown, but what are four-fifths? of the amount that are brown. We don't know how many puppies there are. We don't have to know how many puppies are there are to answer the question. Four fifths of three quarters means four fifths times three quarters. Now the other one I reduced after I think I didn't do the canceling. This time I'm doing the canceling. Four cancels with four leaving ones. So I quickly have my answer. Three fifths of the brown puppies should have white socks if these facts are true. So the word problem, multiplication, fractions, canceling. It has it all. Now I can move on to the divided fractions, which I'm glad to do because writing those word problems takes so long. I'll do some erasing. Get your exercise or your sip of water right now. And let's do a bunch of fractions divisions of fractions. One-eighth divided by two-thirds. One-eighth divided by two-thirds. How do we divide fractions? We turn the second fraction upside down and we multiply instead. One-eighth times three-halves. So once you've learned how to multiply fractions, learning to divide is so quick because once you realize, oh, all I have to do is turn the second one upside down and multiply instead, and I already know how to multiply, that's why teaching dividing fractions is pretty quick, but you have to do a bunch of them, and you have to get used to it, and you have to be careful. I have met students who tried to turn upside down both fractions. I've met students who tried to turn the, the first fraction upside down. No, the second one is the one that should turn upside down, and it's the only one that should, should turn upside down. So 1 times 3 is 3, and 8 times 2 is 16. That means 1 8 divided by 2 thirds is 3 16 That's fun. Can we do cancelling? Not here. During this step we could do cancelling, but there is no cancelling opportunity here. If we tried to do cancelling here, seeing that 8 and that 2, that would be a mistake, because this is not a multiplication. You can do the cancelling in a multiplication, but not in a division. Once you've turned your division into a multiplication, there might be a cancelling opportunity. That's cool, let's see if that happens with some of our examples. I don't have to erase yet, I'm going to do 4 sevenths divided by 3 fourteenths. Let me say one of the fun things about this is to remind you that I always say fractions look like the divided by symbol because there's a relationship between fractions and division. 3 fourteenths can be seen as 3 divided by 14. It is. It is 3 divided by 14. So it is a division. 
This is a good symbol. Okay, but we need to turn the second fraction upside down, so I'm going to write the first fraction without changing it, and then I'm going to both change the symbol to a multiplication symbol and turn this upside down. And this time, there is a cancelling opportunity. Here I could be tempted to cancel a 2 between the 4 and the 14, but I can't. It's a division. I can't do it. But here, now it's a multiplication. And I can cancel a 7 between this 7 and that 14. They have a common factor of 7. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. I can't cancel any more. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 3 is 3. 8 thirds is my answer. It's the right answer, and it, that's cool. That was fun. What if I had done it without cancelling? 4 times 14 is 56, which is a little weird because it's outside of the 12 times 12 times tables. 7 times 3 is 21. If I divide both of these by 1, meaning divide them by a clever form of 1, which would be 7 over 7, I'm going to get 8 thirds. It works that way too. I don't have to do the cancelling, but I'm glad I did. It was fun, and it's fun to do the cancelling, and it makes you get a nice reduced final answer right away, instead of having to do the reducing at the end. But maybe there are students who don't like cancelling very much, and they love reducing. Well, they would make different choices than me, so long as we're both able to get through the question and get the correct answer. I think it's, uh, that's pretty good. So I'm going to do another few division problems quickly. That's really what's making this fun for me right now, is that you can do a lot of examples without it taking a really long time the way it does with word problems. And a lot of repetition is a good thing for the student. So I don't want to just do two divisions and say, okay, we all know how to do dividing fractions. No. How about five sixths? There's my favorite word there, sixths. Five sixths divided by three quarters. That's equal to 5 6 times 4 thirds. Can I cancel something? Yes. Not here, not here, not here, but here I can. The 6 4 combo I can. One's on the top, one's on the bottom. All I can cancel is a 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 3 is 9. 10 ninths. 10 ninths is my answer. If I hadn't done the cancelling, I would have had 5 times 4 is 20, and 6 times 3 is 18. 20 eighteenths, yes, that would have reduced to 10 ninths. So you're really doing the same thing if you use either strategy. How about doing the same, almost the same question? But it's not the same question. What about 5 6 divided by 4 thirds? Okay, it's still a division. I turn this upside down, but just because I'm changing the question. I still have to rewrite this as 5 6 times 3 quarters. It's not the same question. It's not going to give the same answer. I can do, can I do cancelling? Yes, I can do cancelling between the 6 and the 3 this time. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 5 times 1 is 5, and 2 times 4 is 8. 5 eighths. Interesting. This one gave an answer that's smaller than 1. This one gave an answer that's bigger than one. When we think about why it happened, it just makes us understand better. Trying to figure it out by looking at this is a little bit confusing. But when you realize that this is the same thing as this, and you look at the multiplication, you start saying, well, yeah, five and four are both pretty big. Five times four is 20. Six times three is 18. That, nothing's surprising once you really look at it. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more. I'm going to do another two examples where I just change one of the fractions and we'll compare them. How about 7 eighths divided by 1 half? I have to rewrite it. So it's, use, it's, it's worth the, the chalkboard space or the paper space it's worth the chalk or the pencil to show this as a multiplication because if you start trying to do it in your head and, and showing less steps, you're going to end up making mistakes. 7 8 times, second fraction turned upside down, 2 over 1. Can I cancel? Yes, I can. 
Do I feel like doing it without canceling this time? Yes, I do. 7 times 2 is 14. 8 times 1 is 8. Because we could have canceled and we didn't, we're going to have to do a reduction. Is there a, a relationship between the canceling and the reduction? Yes. Why? Because what could I have canceled here? All I could have canceled was a 2 between this 2 and this 8. And if I had cancelled that, I wouldn't have had to reduce at the end. But what is it that I'm going to divide by my clever form of 1? No surprises, it's a 2. The 2 that I would have cancelled is the same 2 that I use here. I'm doing, really doing the same thing in a different way. 14 eighths divided by 2 over 2 is 7 fourths. That's my answer. If I had cancelled, this would have turned into a 4, that would have turned into a 1, and I would have had 7 fourths of the answer right away. How about 1 half divided by 7 eighths? This time I didn't turn one of the fractions upside down. This time I just put them in a, the opposite order. 1 half first, 7 eighths. I'm not saying this is the same question. That is the point. It's now a new question. And to answer it, I'm going to do the same strategy. First fraction, I rewrite. I put a multiplication symbol instead of division, but I have to turn the second fraction upside down, so that's 8 sevenths now. I can cancel. This time I'll do it. Cancel a 2. There's a 1 left. Cancel a 2. There's a 4 left. I end up with 4 sevenths as my answer. Oh, interesting. 7 eighths divided by 1 half is 7 fourths. And 1 half divided by 7 eighths is 4 sevenths. There's another one of those patterns I'm always talking about. That's cool. That's fun. Okay, a different style, slightly different style of question. Four eighths divided by one half. That's equal to four eighths times two over one. Turn the second fraction upside down, multiply instead. Equals eight over eight. Four times two is eight, eight times one is eight. Hey, it's eight over eight, that's equal to one. That's a clever form of one. Huh. It happened as my answer, so I can write equals one. But if I did canceling, 4 eighths divided by 1 half is equal to 4 eighths times 2 over 1. Now I'm going to do some cancelling. I'll cancel the 2 from here leaving a 1 and from this 8 leaving a 4. Oh, I can cancel a 4 leaving a 1 and a 4 leaving a 1. Look, everything's 1s. So my answer is 1 over 1 or 1. Not surprised. Interesting. And then I look at this and I realize that 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, because I already know that. I already know how to reduce fractions. If I reduced 4 eighths, I'd get 1 half. 4 is half of 8. So half divided by a half equals 1. Well, that just makes sense. Of course half divided by a half equals 1. So cancelling, I don't normally cancel when I'm on the divided, division side. But remember what I said originally. You can cancel a fraction inside one fraction, and that's okay. But you can't cancel across between two fractions when it's division, or addition, or subtraction, only with multiplication. I could have canceled here. So if I cancel a four, I get a one here and a two there, and then I can see right away, oh, it always was one half divided by one half, and I'm not surprised when something divided by itself gives one. Well, that's fun, that's cool. Let's look at another one like that. But we'll just go, instead of having to reduce a fraction to realize that we're dividing a fraction by itself, let's just try dividing a fraction by itself. And the fraction I'm choosing is 7 thirds. 7 thirds divided by 7 thirds. Can't do any cancelling here. But it's something divided by itself. I know it's going to be 1. So I could just write equals 1. But I'm going to rewrite, how about I write it like this, 7 thirds over 7 thirds. There's that dreaded fraction in, fractions inside of bigger fractions thing. That normally we would avoid. But 7 thirds divided by 7 thirds, the whole fractions will cancel. That's one way of showing it. That's, that was weird. 
I kind, I kind of just, that kind of just happened by itself. But what else can I do? I can write 7 thirds times 3 sevenths. Anytime you're doing this, a fraction divided by the exact same fraction, once you convert it into a multiplication, you're going to get a glorious cancelling opportunity because the threes cancel here, leaving ones, and the sevens cancel here, leaving ones, and you end up with that ones all over the place thing, which gives you one over one equals one. And it's fun to do just because it's fun to think about. I like this. That was my last example. So, we've covered reducing fractions, we've covered multiplying fractions with cancelling, We've done a couple of word problems, which were also multiplications of fractions. And then we covered a whole bunch of divisions of fractions and realized, well, dividing fractions is also kind of, well, that's right here, not there. Dividing fractions is also multiplication. So multiplication of fractions is really useful. I think that's the take home message. So from my beautiful assistant Mocha, who is upstairs and has one white mitten, uh, and from me, Doug, who is always happy to teach supercharged students all the time, I am going to say goodbye. Um, I will see you next time, and I'm looking forward to it.